All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you all for joining us this morning. Uh, just want to recognize just a few people that are with us. Uh, obviously, the Georgia Emergency Management Agency Director, uh, Chris Stallings, is with us. Also, I uh, just want to thank the Department of Public Safety, all the state patrol folks that we have that are on the ground here in the area and other parts of the state that have been assisting. Uh, certainly, we have the National Guard geared up and ready to move uh, potentially to multiple places. Uh, and we're, we're just you know staying in constant contact with them and what plans they're getting not only out of, out of D.C. but here in the state as well. Obviously, we've had DOT involved. Department of Natural Resource teams are standing by, as they always do, to be storm ready, working with the Department of Agriculture, the Insurance Commissioner's Office over the last several days, reminding Georgians to be prepared uh, to have any kind of insurance policies together and take necessary steps to be storm ready. Uh, we're also doing the same when it comes to price gouging, potential price gouging, and other type things. Uh, just consumer protection issues with the uh, Attorney General Chris Carr's office to meet all the challenges of the storm. And I just uh, appreciate uh, so many members of the General Assembly that are just great supporters of this whole statewide team being here. Uh, certainly appreciate uh, Majority Leader John Burns specifically for his leadership in the House. Uh, I did want to acknowledge uh, Representative Ron Stevens who had a death in the family, couldn't be with us today and then Tyler Harper, uh, who's been a great champion for public safety in the Georgia State Senate, along with a lot of other legislators that are here. I also want to thank uh, uh, Director Dennis Jones, the Chatham County EMA Director, and Greg Kelly, who's uh, here with the San uh, Savannah Airport. Just wanted to give you a quick timeline. Uh, as you all know, the state of emergency issue Tuesday went into effect this morning at 7 a.m., that's continuing to make state resources available to local governments and entities within the hurricane's impact area. The state operations center is at level one, which is full-scale activation. Teams from every relevant state agency are standing by to deploy to any potential affected counties when and if appropriate. We were there yesterday morning, and uh, everybody's ready to go, and we're in constant contact with our friends at the local level. I know we have folks from Georgia Power here this morning. We are continuing to coordinate with our utility providers. They've been staging equipment, also inspecting right of way pass and preparing to respond to any power outages. Uh, currently, the Savannah Airport remains open and operational. Uh, Griff Lynch is here with the Ports Authority, and Griff was just giving me a quick update. Uh, the, the port terminal has been cleared. Uh, of any waiting vessels last night and operations are currently scheduled to continue to 6 p.m. So there's normal activities on the port uh, with containers that are going out, uh, but, but all the, the vessels have been moved to safe locations. I will be having a call uh, later in the morning with Rear, Rear Admiral McPherson of the United States Coast Guard to talk about the status of the port and what they're seeing and any actions that they may or may not take. Uh, obviously, we want to make sure that we can continue to control, whenever possible, the operations of the port, and we certainly appreciate the great team that we have there. For situational uh, awareness, the Talmadge Bridge continues to remain open. At this moment, the Sydney Lanier Bridge in Glen County has been closed or will be closing at 9 a.m. this morning. So, folks in that area of the state need to just be aware of that. Uh, we're not sure when it will be reopened, but after the storm passes, we'll evaluate uh, what steps we need to take to get the bridge reopened, if any. We're certainly continue to welcome uh, our friends from our neighboring state south of us, the state of Florida with open arms. We continue to have a lot of hotel, um, motel capacity to meet their demand. Uh, anyone that's looking for a place to stay as they come through our state can visit the Explore Georgia website. There's hurricane information on there uh, and that's associated with the Department of Economic Development. And they, ha they continue to be the lead agency to coordinate uh, with, with the uh, hotel industry uh, to be able to help our guests. And we're uh, certainly welcoming them to our state under very tough circumstances. I would ask everybody to keep 
those Floridians that have been affected by the storm and your thoughts and prayers as you know uh, that was a devastating storm when it hit land it continued to build strength uh, very tough situation a lot of damage uh, they're still dealing uh, with the aftermath and the, the current path of the storm with heavy rain events flooding and other things uh, and that is coming our way uh, thankfully we've been very lucky overnight that the form, storm continues to move out to sea and further eastward uh, but we're still the coast is still going to be affected thank goodness it doesn't look like it's going to be as much as what we thought the path was going to be earlier in the week uh, so we are blessed by that but certainly praying for our friends in Florida we do have concerns and Director Stallings and a few other folks going to speak to us this morning and give you an update from their end but we still are concerned about potential flooding and, uh, and heavy winds that will be pushing through our parts of our state. And we just want to remind everybody to be weather aware of that and to take precautions now uh, to keep you and your family safe. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Director Stallings, and we'll hear from another, another person or two, and then we'll open it up for questions. Chris. Thank you, Governor. Uh, first and foremost, we just want to can, uh, remember to keep those in Florida in our thoughts. As the governor said, they dealt with a tremendous storm last night. Uh, Hurricane Ian made landfall as a Category 4 along the west coast of Florida. Overnight, it has downgraded to a tropical storm as it has moved across the uh, peninsula of Florida. It's expected to move back out into the Atlantic where it will gather, but most likely not regain any additional strength. It's expected to move on a continued east-northeast uh, pattern toward more toward Beaufort and Charleston, but that does not remove us from the impacts of the storm. The eye of the storm will, prob will most likely miss Georgia, but we will get some storm surge along the coast. The bigger uh, concern we've got is your rain and wind. So for Georgia now, this is going to become a more uh, heavy rain and wind event for southeast Georgia. If you're in a low-lying area that is prone to flooding, you should probably start taking precautions over those areas. I don't think we're going to be looking at any uh, mass flooding uh, outside of areas that traditionally flood, but if you're in an area that would traditionally flood with a lot of rain, uh, you should be preparing yourself uh, for that. The other concern that we've got at this time uh, is, the, is, the, is the coastal um, push. So there's going to be some high tide and uh, coastal flooding combined together. So with that, we could see some beach erosion and things of that nature. So we will continue to monitor that. As the governor mentioned, uh, Georgia Department of Transportation has been on top of things. We don't have any road closures other than the bridge, uh, as previously mentioned and we're going to continue to monitor uh, all of those. Other than that, the, the biggest thing I would tell you is stay in contact with your local news sources. Trust them. The team that you have here is a good team. They're a real good team and they're monitoring and they're watching everything uh, they can to ensure your safety and they're going to be the best way to get you that information is needed. So continually monitor that. Stay weather wise. If you're not prepared, it's a good time to still continue preparations to get yourself, charge your cell phones, uh, have some flashlights, batteries. There's still the potential of power loss with the winds. Uh, we'll get in those areas. Also remember this, and it's important to remember, as long as there are tropical storm winds, we can't put people up in bucket trucks to restore power. It's also difficult for our first responders to get in there while the water is still rising. So if you find yourself in those situations and you call for help and we say we're coming, it's not going to be that traditional quick response. We are on our way, but it could extend those times. So keep that in mind. Thank you, sir. All right. And then, Griff, you want to? Or do you want to? Yeah, come on, Griff. Go ahead and give us a local All right. And then we'll hear from <laughs> Thank you, Governor Kemp, and also Director Starlins. Thank you all for uh, supporting Chatham County. In Chatham County, we do have our emergency operations center is activated. This is day two of the activation. Uh, we do have limited staff within the EOC, making sure that we maintain that situational awareness with the community, collecting information to ensure that everything that is happening in Chatham County is coordinated to the maximum extent possible. Uh, all of our citizens, I think, are ready. Um, our public safety partners are certainly ready. Uh, we've reached out to all of our uh, other partners like our public works, our hospitals, uh, Georgia Power, um, our other utilities, and we're just making sure that everybody is ready for the storm, making sure that 
any impacts that, uh, that affect our community, we're ready to react to. And again, thanks for uh, Georgia Mercy Management for sending a liaison down to our Mercy Operations Center to work with us. It truly is an opportunity for us to have state and local coordination efforts right in right in house. So uh, we're very thankful for that. That's great. Thank you. Hi, Griff Lynch, Executive Director of the Georgia Ports. And as the governor has mentioned, uh, the Georgia Ports terminal operations are truck gates. Rail operations are ongoing, and we expect to run them through 6 p.m. tonight. All vessels were cleared of the berths yesterday at about 6 p.m., and that, that applies to both Brunswick and Savannah. And uh, at this point in time, we'll make a call as far as our operations for tomorrow at about 12 o'clock today after working closely with the Coast Guard. This is the update for the Georgia ports. All right, we'll open it up for any questions you guys may have for any, any of the folks that gave the updates this morning. So, Governor, right now, it looks to be deceiving. And the folks that live on the coast, what are your recommendations to them at this point? They, I, I know it's moving out into the Atlantic, et cetera, but what would you recommend or, or your staff? Well, I think the fortunate thing for us is Georgians have been aware of this storm for many days now, uh, and we have communicated directly and, and been transparent on what we're seeing. This has been a as we were talking to Will Langston uh, yesterday morning, the state meteorologist, this has been a storm that's been very hard to predict. Uh, certainly, I think you can get a little better predictions now that it's made landfall. It's certainly breaking up, but it's still been a devastating storm. Uh, thankfully, it looks to be moving further east than what we thought, but that's what we are, I mean, literally going to continue to watch 24-7. If something changes that's different from anything that you heard this morning, we will communicate that directly and very quickly. Uh, we're giving you the latest information that we're getting, but this is a, a tropical storm. It's a big weather event. As you can see on the TV screens, it's been devastating in Florida, and we should not take anything for granted here. This team is certainly not, and I would urge Georgia citizens to be over-prepared, and hopefully this storm under-delivers. Governor, can anyone talk about the decision to reverse the decision to close the Talmadge Bridge? I know you've touched on that, but is there anyone who has more of an explanation as to why that is? Well, I mean, the Talmadge Bridge is still open. It's, Sid it's Sydney, Lanier, and Brunswick that's been closed because obviously the storm is coming through there right now. I mean, the further the storm, storm goes, we don't feel like it's going to pick up in er any energy, so hopefully it will continue to play out. We certainly don't want to close the Talmadge Bridge if it's not necessary, but if it is necessary, we will. And that's something that, that Georgia DOT and Director Stallings and, and GEMA will continue to be making as we, I mean, those are the kind of things that we're literally monitoring 24 seven. People who are on Tybee Island, Island, excuse me, are concerned with a lot of the flooding, right? Um, when is there a proper notice or if there will be a notice of maybe potentially evacuating that area before things could potentially maybe get worse? Well, we, we have not had any reason to order any kind of evacuation. Uh, we've been very transparent with people about what they're going to be facing. Um, you know, the, the local elected officials that are standing beside, behind me, uh, we're telling us this morning about what the tides are going to be down here, when they're going to hit. The citizens know that. We're continuing to communicate those type of things. Uh, if people are worried about that, they should move to higher ground or perhaps move inland and let the storm pass and then reassess when to go back. Uh, but we, we also know that some people are not willing to do that. And if, and if they are not, they just need to be prepared for what's coming and be paired, prepared for a potentially slow response, as Director Sollins said, if there's still tropical storm type winds that are dangerous for first responders or rising waters that are dangerous for first responders, um, and we'll respond as quick as we can. But that's why we're just communicating. That's why I came this morning is to let people know, you know, you should not underestimate this storm. You should take this seriously uh, to protect your family and try to protect whatever belongings that you can. You still have time to be able to do that uh, as we speak. Uh, but I would not delay in making those decisions. Governor, you mentioned folks evacuating up from Florida, and I wondered if you had any sense of, um, any sense of, I mean, numbers or scale there. I mean, are you seeing hotel occupancy going up, people yeah. in state parks, that kind of thing? 
Well, we, we have obviously our state parks are open, ready, uh, ready to receive uh, our guests from the state of Florida. We've seen very minimal increased volume on our interstates. Uh, it's, you know, maybe 100 cars an hour or so. Um, our hotel occupancy rates, the Department of Economic Development continues to monitor that. We're not seeing any issues around the state, so we still have a lot of availability uh, for folks and would encourage them if they need a place to come uh, that we are open, we can take care of them, and we'd be honored to have them. And is, oh, is Georgia uh, providing any support to Florida in the, as they start to move into recovery, whether that's power trucks, yeah. emergency crews, anything like that? Well, we have, we've had conversations with that. That's something I've talked to Director Stallings about yesterday and this morning in our briefing um, because we want to be helpful to them. But we also realize the storm fixing to move our, through our state, and we got to keep our resources here to support our folks, and they certainly understand that, and that's what we're going to do. Uh, that is my first priority, and I made it clear to Chris that that should be his. But that being said, if we have resources once the storm passes and we don't have big issues that we're dealing with, uh, we are glad to help our neighbors. Georgians have been known for responding to our friends and neighbors literally all over the country uh, in times of need, and we're staying ready to do that again, but Jordan should know that we're going to make sure, make sure and take care of the, the home team first. Uh, but we are preparing for those plans if we have assets available that we don't need here that we can sit, uh, help them. Uh, Director Stallings told me this morning, too, though, the thing about Florida right now, I mean, they're still not responding. I mean, they're still dealing with the storm coming through. They cannot send power companies in right now. Uh, they can't send their first responders in. They're still hunkered down and ready to move. But, you know, this is the thing about what we've been through, not only in Florida, but in Georgia, when you think about Hurricane Michael and a lot of, a lot of other large weather events. We have a team that's very seasoned. We have great coordination not only with uh, state government but with our local partners but also the federal government and our private sector partners like our utilities and they are gearing up supplying up and have been for days now to be ready to respond whether it's here in georgia or helping our our friends south of here and, and we'll do all we can to help folks if if we have the resources Governor, talk about price, price gouging obviously it's not happening now but as things move further into tomorrow if it deteriorates how, do you, how does a person report something like that if they suspect that's happening? Well, first of all, let, let me just calm any fears that may be out there. We are not seeing any of that. These are just things that people need to be aware of. They need to be aware of potential scams out there. It's unfortunate that bad people would take advantage of good-hearted folks that want to give to storm relief and other things. So I would make sure you're going to trusted places if you want to help those in Florida. Uh, that had been hurt by, by this big storm. Um, but the Attorney General's office is the place to go to make a complaint, the Consumer Protection Division. Uh, also, the Insurance Commissioner's office is, is, is uh, keeping an eye on these things as well. But we have talked to the pipeline folks and a lot of other folks in the trucking industry, fuel industry, convenience store partners. I mean, we are seeing no shortages of anything at this point that I'm aware of. Uh, if that becomes prevalent, we will certainly be noticing the media and our citizens about that. Uh, but I wouldn't want anybody to panic over that situation at this point. Regarding issues with the storm, like power outages, what is the average uh, response time with responding to power outages if they do happen? How long do people expect to be without their power? Well, that's, that's, a, that's a good but hard question to answer because uh, it really depends on the amount of damage. You know, if you have one transformer blow or one power pole that gets blown over by wind, we can respond to those things once the storm passes very quickly. But, you know, if you have a storm like's going through Florida right now and it literally knocks an entire grid off and breaks every pole or 70 percent of the poles, I mean, obviously it's going to take weeks to fix that back. Uh, we, are, we are blessed that we don't believe we're going to be dealing with that situation in Georgia. Uh, but there is the potential that we could have loss of power and uh, as I mentioned, our utility partners are, they are stood up and they are ready to respond as soon as it's safe to do so. I would just remind people, uh, you know, if you lose power, especially when the storm's going through, uh, you do not need to be walking out uh, in, in the, the wet areas where there's down power lines. Just try to make that call to the utility companies 
um, or your local emergency management folks. They'll run it up through our SOC and we can have people respond to that that can get that power cut off and make sure it's a safe environment. People should be very very careful about that over the next couple of days if it happens here. Governor, have you spoken with President Biden? I have not. I talked to the FEMA administrator yesterday, or I may have been day day before yesterday, um, which I appreciate. Uh, Director Stallings has had constant communication with FEMA. As I mentioned, I'm speaking to the Admiral today uh, around 11 to talk talk to him about the uh, port situation. Uh, here in our state, certainly in Savannah and Brunswick, uh, but we've had great, great uh, communication with the federal government. All right, thank you, everybody.